Good evening, everybody. It's uh, 5.30, Monday, August 19th, 2024. So I'm going to open the public hearing for the purpose of amending the Morristown Town Plan. And in order to get things going here, what I'd like to do is I'm going to read what is in the plan. And um, this is on page 11 of the town plan. I'm going to start with the paragraph that says, even though, and what I'll do is I'll read that paragraph as a little bit of a preamble to what is being struck and then what is being replaced. So, so for the record, then the, our current town plan reads, even though the town government has no control over state roads located in our town, these roads still play a very important part of day to day life here. Commuters coming to and leaving our region use these state roads daily, which are the property of the Vermont Agency of Transportation, VTRANS. Access to the ex Essex area via Route 15 and, and the access that Route 100 provides to the Interstate Highway in Burlington are incredible, incredibly important to this community and the many residents who commute to these areas. With rush hour commute times to Burlington already at an hour plus for a distance of only 45 miles, the Select Board and Planning Council must use all the influence available to ensure that these commuting times do not become even longer. Our town is hurt economically the further it gets in terms of travel time by car and from Burlington and Chittenden County as a whole. So that will remain. What will be struck is the rest of that paragraph that says, or at least what's um, suggested to be struck, Therefore, this plan objects to attempts by neighboring municipalities to lower speed limits between our community and the interstate on Route 100 in areas located outside the village limits and designated downtowns when reducing the speed limit is not supported by the fi findings of a VTRANS speed study. Similarly, this plan also objects to attempts by neighboring municipalities to lower speed limits between our town and Essex on Route 15 in areas located outside of the village limits and designated downtowns when reducing the speed limits is not supported by the findings of a VTRANS speed study. <laughs> Similarly, this plan objects to attempts by neighboring municipalities to install traffic signals and roundabouts that are shown to not be warranted by a VTRANS traffic study on the same sections of Route 100 and Route 15 when the request is for an area located outside the village limits or a designated downtown. With that being said, this plan is supportive of increasing pedestrian safety, including lowering speed limits where the Vermont, uh, where the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail crosses Vermont Route 15. And that, which I just read, will be struck and replaced. The suggestion is to replace that with, therefore, this plan encourages open communication with neighboring communities through the state Route 15 and state Route 100 pass. The town is supportive of the designated village center and downtown initiatives which strive to enhance pedestrian and bicyclist safety. We support the reduction of the speed limit around the rail trail crossing in the town of Johnson that provides additional bike and pedestrian safety. The town will work collaboratively with its neighbors, with our neighbors to ensure that they are made aware of any negative impacts to our community which may occur because of slowing traffic outside the village center and or designated downtown. So there is what is suggested to be struck and there is what is suggested to be a replacement. So I guess I would open it up to the board for comments, questions, concerns. No, I, as far as I'm concerned, we've been talking about this for a while now. And, um, I feel completely comfortable uh, with the change. It is only in chapter three of the transportation piece of the town plan. And um, this will make the process, make the, our town plan acceptable to um, LCPC, which has um, a whole host of ramifications in terms of how we can move forward as a community. So I fully support this. Other comments? I guess I would just add to that that um, this paragraph is the reason that our town plan has not been accepted by the Regional Planning Commission. And it's my understanding that they have uh, seen this and 
they are okay with this language as well. well hearing no comments, any comments in the audience? Okay, I would, uh, it's uh, my understanding that what we can do is close this meeting. We are going to have another public hearing in two weeks for the same purpose by statutory requirements. And uh, then at a date thereafter, we would, at a date thereafter, we would vote to accept these changes. Or would we do so in two weeks? Um, we'll be getting into that in the calendar, but um, I don't think that was on that timeline. Mm -hmm. You're right. This is yeah. yeah, it's on. I'll have to get back to you with that question. That's okay. So we're going to have another public hearing in, in two weeks. So I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing if there's no other comments. There's nothing, just one sec, there's nothing online. There's nothing in the audience. So I have a motion by Chris to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by George and a motion by Chris. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 That, would, that would be unanimous. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard to adjourn. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 And that would be unanimous as well, Judy. Okay, so it's uh, 536. We are going to wait until 540, 545 to open the select board meeting because that's when it's warned. So we'll take a little, little break here for a few minutes. Okay, good evening again, everybody. It's 545, Monday, August 19th, 2024. I'm gonna call the select board meeting for the town of Morristown to order. Uh, agenda changes or additions? No. Approve the minutes. So we have minutes from August 5th. Do I, I have make, a motion? I make a motion to accept the minutes uh, as presented of August 5th, 2024. I have a motion by Chris. Second. Second by Richard. Do we have any discussion regarding the minutes? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of the minutes for August 5th as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. New business, setting the 2024-2025 municipal tax rate. So uh, I just want to say I think we have a little bit of good news here. Uh, our municipal tax rate is going up less than 1%, um, 0.7%. And it's my understanding we can we can thank in large we can in large part the, the increase in the grant list for this. Um, I mean, also I think the budget that we presented last year was responsible, but the grant list helped to bring it down. So that's uh, that's an increase that's very nice to see for a change. Half a penny. Half a penny. Uh, do we need a motion to accept this? Okay, and we'll probably have a suggested motion motion out there. So I would make the motion to set the fiscal year 2425 municipal tax rate at uh, 0.7039 cents. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Do I have any discussion, comments? I just didn't know if you wanted to read the school ones for people that might watch it later. Sure. Um, not that we have any control over them, but just for educational purposes. Okay, so 
just read the actual rates and what, what's going on with them? Yeah, the education, um, the homestead, and then the homestead. Okay, so the homestead tax rate will go from, um, well, the education rate. Oh, I see how this is. So the homestead tax rate last year was 1.7345 and will increase to 1.80454. That's an increase of 4% in the tax rate, the homestead tax rate. Right, the educate. Yeah. Oh, that's the overall, yeah, that's the line. I'm sorry, that's the overall. So the education uh, rate last year was 1.00356, which will increase to 1.1015. That's an increase of approximately 6.36%. The non-residential tax rate was 1.1803 last year and is increasing to 1.3530, which is an increase of approximately 14.63%. So we can see that the municipal tax rate is pretty flat, it's extremely flat, but the education rate is still going up. So the overall tax rate uh, is increasing. Thank you, Sarah. So question? Yeah. I think it won't, Sarah. So the, the Sugwood does not approve the, the school tax rate. Does anybody approve? Does the school district do that? Or is that just through the state? In the past, the town has approved it. But um, Tina and I were talking, you have no control over it. So if you don't approve it, you still have to set it. So I reached out to other towns um, in Vermont to see if anybody else does it. And um, nobody else ap approves it. They just approve the municipal that they have control over. Um, and you get documentation from the Agency of Education on what the mm -hmm. education rates are. Correct. For the town of Correct. Okay. And it, it's on a, um, a public uh, website that anybody can access. Right. It lists every town and yeah. what the uh, state designates the uh, homestead yeah. and non homestead. So, right now we have a motion to accept the municipal tax rate. We don't need a motion to accept the uh, education tax rate. Okay. Any further comments from the board? Come on up. I would just like Sarah to explain how you come about, how these, you get these figures, if you can. I talked to the school uh, superintendent about the school things, and uh, it really, this education rate really doesn't have a whole lot to say about what the school budget's going to do. So, uh, how, how did it affect you? Thank you. <clears throat> My simple sassy answer is I don't figure it out at all. Tina does it. I just proofread her work. <laughs> but because I proofread her work, I can sort of explain. Um, what she does is she takes the um, the grand list figure that Terry gives her to know what the grand list is. And then she takes. She takes the budget overview that's in the town report of what um, was proposed to be budgeted and then puts it into the spreadsheet she has that's broken down for all of the articles and it breaks down the general government versus um, the highway. It breaks down um, the social service articles. And then when we do the budget and voters vote on the one cent, uh, one cent or half a cent, it's just an estimate of what it is. It's That's based on the grand list from the year before. But when we go to actually set the tax rate, we have the new grand list. So um, she plugs in the, those figures. So like the um, one cent um, for the fire department, that's a change of $3,800 just on grand, um, grand list growth. So, so she, fig so she, fig basically she takes every article that's financial of the budget, plugs it into an Excel um, spreadsheet, and then divides it by the grand list is the simplest answer. And then Morristown also has a local um, agreement with the veterans that 
um, we, I think the state sets it at 10,000 and you get a reduction, but Morristown voters, I can't remember when, I've 16 years as of yesterday here, so it's more than that. Um, it, uh, Morristown um, veterans get 40% um, dis, uh, 40,000 um, discount from their assessment, not, not percent. Um, but the rest of the, which is about $10,000 for the whole town. So those $10,000 of the discounts that we give to veterans have to be divided by all of the tax mm -hmm. um, payers. So that's also calculated in here. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay. So we have a motion. Motion by Chris and a second by George to accept the municipal tax rate at 0 0.7039. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. And that would be unanimous. Thank you. The timeline review for the November special election. So um, Sarah has kindly gone through and figured out a timeline. And I think this is a, just an FYI. I don't think we need any action on this. You can see that um, in September and October, there's a lot of things coming up, a lot of time, a lot of dates that need to be met. And uh, thank you, Sarah, for putting all this together. There's quite a bit on the uh, backs of administration that needs to be done, especially in September and uh, October. There's quite a bit on the backs of the town clerk and administration to get all this done. So I guess I would just uh, ask at this point, Oh, and I just say that as far as the local election is concerned, because this is a general election in November, the local election will be to vote on our charter as proposed, giving the tax, uh, the voters a chance <laughs> to vote on the charter, giving the, the uh, voters a chance to vote on the tax assessment district and the financing. The third thing would be the financing for uh, Jersey Heights. So I just kind of throw that in there. But um, are there any questions in regards to the timeline? The only question I have is um, where does the public meetings to discuss the special tax district and cost come into this? Is there, a, is there a timeline? Because there's going to need to be information that goes out to the community and an opportunity to um, you know, present what the project is what our plan is, the cost, and why we're uh, looking at tax assessment district. So the charter does require some public hearings and they're on, on here in September. Yeah. The other two, uh, correct me where I go wrong, but it sounds like the informational meeting may take care of that question and that would be on the 28th of October. Right, but that's 10 days prior. Oh yeah. And right. I think that, you know, my, my fear is, is that um, facts will become uh, indifferent um, to, uh, or, or non-facts will become indifferent to facts <clears throat> if you wait until 10 days before this, because I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's a, an important subject to discuss. And I think that we need to be out in front of it. Um, it is the board's decision to move forward with the tax assessment district and i think that we need to give it its due in terms of public interest yeah and i think our it's very fair to say our town manager has done some homework on this and i think he'd like to make a comment about sure how to get that information out there yeah so george you had expressed <clears throat> directly to me some you know the same concern mm -hmm. and uh so I've consulted with legal counsel about when we can start educating the public. Um, and he highly recommends that we do not start educating until we sign a resolution and warning. So that will be on September 30th. So as of September 30th, we can provide educational materials on social media, um, wherever else. And we can, we can schedule now uh, to have additional meetings if, if you so choose, uh, but we do not want to start 
until after we have uh, signed the resolution and warning on the 30th. Okay. Um, I want to let you know that I am in communications with legal counsel. I'm in communications with uh, Tyler Mumley as a project manager to, to, first of all, obtain very specific information about the, the residents and um, the, the percentage that the town is liable for for the roads and streets and um, we should have that at least a week in advance of the 30th uh, so on the 30th you know we'll have no question about how the warning and the resolution should be worded okay so can i follow up you sure can so i, I don't want I'm, I'm going to be nitpicky the legal said we can't go public with any informational meeting until we sign the warning but we any can, education yeah yes but we can be working on presentations mm -hmm. ahead of time so that we are ready to go when it's legitimate to go public yes okay that that's my first thing and then i just want to be clear wednesday october 16th uh is marked as ballots will all be available am i correct in assuming i'm not sure Brent, if it's you or sarah and whoever's got the answer is that translation is that when the may not not a translation Additionally, that's when the mail-in ballots will be going out or being received by the voters. I'll defer to Sarah. I'm going to let Sarah okay. answer that. It does say town clerk at the end of that line, too. Ah, okay. <laughs> that, um, that's worded funny, sorry. I probably <laughs> was thinking of somebody, something and then changed it. Um, that means that's the statutory date that ballots have to be available. So 20, the ballots have to be available 20 days ahead of time. Okay. I've already reached out to the printing company. I'm already working with them on ordering all the envelopes, um, figuring out the postage, they're aware. I've reached out to the, um, the tabulator company. I don't know if that's the right word to get, to get the chip, the chip for the tabulator. Um, so they're, they're all on hold. They can't really start anything until you actually sign the warning because you guys could all change your mind mm -hmm. in essence um, before September 30th. And um, so, however, I'm going to mail them everything on October 1st and um, to start. So then it, however long it's going to take them to process the ballots, they could come out sooner, but statutorily they have to be out by October 16th. Okay. Well, I get you this, sir. Let me ask you one more. I think I know the answer to this, but I want to make sure that my thinking is right. The local mail mail pack that's going out cannot contain anything but the ballot information, correct? Correct. So no no information can be used to distribute that, which is what I assume it was going to be. Mm -hmm. So like what the school has done um, is they've sent out postcards if, if you want that expense of sending out a flyer, but it's not within the with, within the ballot. And you could decide that you want to have another meeting besides the informational meeting. I should also let you know that I reached out to SHAP to moderate the two um, public hearings for the charter and the informational hearing. He's on vacation, but um, but he's aware to look for an email. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, so then my concern, Brent, that, that's not for you, Sarah, but if we're going to, if the public is going to get mails and ballots no later than the 16th of October, and maybe earlier, I think we've got to be ready to have informational material. Define that however you want. Another meeting, distribution of flyers, call, postcards, call it what you want. To be in voters' hands, uh, just about like when the mail and ballots go out, because I, now, I guess I am going back to Sarah. I think there's a, a large number of people who get their mail-in ballots. They act on them immediately and move them. And if we haven't taken the forethought to get them some information, talking to them doesn't make any difference because they've already voted. And I, I think it's our civic responsibility to at least try and give them as much information as we can before they vote. And if, it, if I'm right, that a lot of ballots come in pretty quickly after they hit people's mailboxes, we need to be in front of that in some way. Uh, I'm not trying to direct, but I think if we wait till a 
week after the ballots are up, we're going to miss a lot of people who will vote <clears throat> based on what they've heard, accurate, inaccurate. Once they voted, yeah. we can't reach them. Yeah, thanks, George. And it's only eight weeks away that mm -hmm. we're talking about. Exactly. And, uh, so eight weeks from now, Sarah's going to be mailing ballots or thereabouts. That's, that's, and I mean, uh, we're living in a different, we're living in a different, I think, in the public, public uh, government, or whether it's us, the school district, the house being us. Pre-COVID, we, we dealt in a different world. We had town meetings, we had mostly on-site voting from COVID, and then what's been institutionalized since that is mail-in voting, and the numbers are huge around uh, uh, mail-in ballots. So if, so while Sarah's child, I'm sure, is absolutely accurate about the information the meeting has to be on the 10 days before, absolutely. This is the statutory requirement, right? I think we've got another requirement now as, as public officials, and that's to get that information out far sooner. Informational, fact only, not slant in any way, shape, or form, so that people have a chance to at least stop the thinking process and call in to you or whomever to ask questions about what it is, get their facts straight. So when they check the box, at least we give them the chance to be an informed voter. They choose not to look, we can't do anything about that. But if we don't make the effort, I think we're at fault. And given what you're saying, George, I just before you, um, probably good to have it in their hands, like you said, a few days, if not you know, three or four days before they get their ballot. Well, yes. And maybe that little, whatever it is, we don't know what it's going to be yet, but um, that reminds people that you are about to re receive your ballot. You're going to receive your ballot in X number of days, which will be well, the, small, the, small digits. There's really no reason. If we sign, if we work between now um, and coordinate the administration and work between now and September 30th, Really, on Tuesday, something could go into front porch form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, something could be ready to go in the News and Citizen on Thursday exactly. to be able to to get out factual information yes. about what we're doing, yeah. and that would be a good start to as a preamble to any other informational meetings that we decide to have. Yeah. But right out of the gate, I believe that we need to be there. Yeah. Okay. So would you would you concur? Sure. Uh, I have to admit, I hadn't thought about sending out postcards. So what I'll try to do is uh, before the next select board meeting, work with uh, Judy and, and Sarah to obtain quotes on postcards mm -hmm. so that the select board is informed on the cost for that and um, that share could, that with you. That could be an option. I mean, front porch forum or news and citizen, or news and citizen you know, maybe we could have them do an article on what's going on, as well as uh, put in a bullet point uh, on a paid advertisement. It would certainly be cheaper than a, than a postcard because we were talking about a postcard on local option tax as well. But yeah, I think we want to get prices on that. It would be appropriate. I think our younger voters would be reminding us of, uh, since there's not that many younger folks in the room, <laughs> Sarah, you're the only one. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Just you, Lon. Um, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram. Um, Something I don't know they'll tell about. you not Facebook. Yeah. That's for old people um, like me. <laughs> well, no, I, can, yeah. I can tell you exactly who the demographics are because I study it all the time. You're right. Uh, Facebook is um, has is now the Gen X. That, uh, will read news and citizen calendar. Uh, but, Instagram and stories. It's not even post anymore. It's stories. But we do have our work cut out for us to yeah. get ready for this. Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah. Um, just to follow up on George, um, yes, I'm seeing the bulk of the ballots come back immediately. They're they're voting right away. They're not um, the people that actually come in and vote in person on election day is very minimal. Uh, I brought up this cons this sort of tangent, but sort of the same subject. Um, I brought up my concern a number of times the former Secretary of State to our legislators, I know Judy Bickford wrote um, to them, the timelines don't work anymore. COVID right. changed everything and the laws are based on um, in-person town meeting. Um, and tomorrow, Morristown is hosting the Secretary of State tomorrow afternoon and the nice. brand new elections uh, director. I'm on the um, 
her advisory board and they come to we meet once a month and we rotate towns and tomorrow we're talking all about what election changes um, we want made so this is my major focus so if you guys have any ideas um, between now and noon tomorrow let me know thank you sarah sarah what's the turnaround from the time you actually order typically is it about the same is it is it a week is it three days or is it it sort of depends on what else is going on and like with the special elections it was really quick because no one else nobody else was doing it um town meeting uh not so quick the this could be fairly quick because although there's a general election those ballots are going out by september 20th and being done by a different <laughs> printing company uh, may, they could be done by a week potentially maybe so yeah. we we have a week roughly to get window. information out yeah, That's, window. Yeah. thank you thank you sarah ben, can i ask maybe if I just price out one more thing maybe it's only my curiosity if we did a one page insert in the news and citizen like with all the ads out there now, and in some bright color so hopefully people with one side that says informational meeting only don't just grab all the all and chuck it um i don't know what that would cost that would hit everyone because that hits every post office box how effective it is i've got a, a question about how you know how many people just chuck it but or chuck the whole news and citizen yeah, but, that's easy enough to get a okay. quote for half page, full page, and provide you okay. that information as well. Perfect. Postage for the ballots is around three thousand dollars, just to give you just just postage alone. But that's an um, that's an envelope. And that's yeah. the that's a rates. bigger envelope. That's old rates. Yeah, the rates are up now. Yeah. But a postcard would be cheaper. Just. So, yeah. Are we doing that on the bulk rate? Is that what we have a bulk rate? Come on. Sorry, sorry. I wish Tony was here. No, we did it the first time with a bulk gray and um, Tony slapped my hand. We're not allowed to do that because it's um, first class. It um, first class election. It has to be first okay. class. But okay. I, I'm not saying you can do a po you should do a postcard. It's a lot of money to do a postcard when there's free options. Um, but that you probably could do with a bulk rate. We don't have one, but the pr the printer that I use for the ballot does have one. Okay. I, I, I wasn't talking about the ballot, but I understand why you thought I was talking, I was talking okay. about if we, if we did a one page flyer, folded it up and just did to box holder or, yeah. you know, with a bulk rate, that I think we can do, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's another way of, of getting it out there. And I'm not sure which so, is the right way, but I think we've got to go more than, we can't you just use one venue we've got yeah. no, we've got a variety of <laughs> methodologies and some of them are going to be easy and cheap too yes some of them will be absolutely yeah yeah Judy's also saying there's the front page of the website. We can um, change on the very bottom. Mm -hmm. I think we can have five or six like quick links yes. from the from the um, home page so we could convert one of those. At budget time, we had one just for the budget. We can make one just for the elections. We could make great. that would um, be great so that it was quick for people to find stuff from the yeah. website. Good, thank you. Sarah just a diss it out. I'm done, Sarah. I don't know about anybody else. I'm done. I sit all day. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna pause to. Yeah, come on up. Hesitate spending any of the taxpayers' money to put out this information on this stuff. You can do that from front page forum. It doesn't cost you any money. Uh, front page forum or, or the newspaper doesn't have them. But for us to be spending money for either the local option tax or for for what you're going to be voting on on sure. November, uh, I I I think is unwise. So I would. Uh, would hope you would uh, rethink that spending money on it. And, it. and my understanding is correctly that local option tax won't be voted on until March. We are not voting on the local option tax in November. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So just a question quick, because when are we going to <clears throat> discuss uh, how we're going to get the word out? For I just for I just which? want to make sure there is a public discussion. 
uh, like Tom was saying about spending money on a postcard and newspapers and again because this is my field and I know how effective these things are and money. Uh, yeah. um, can be but anyway I just want to make sure that it's um, a public discussion and that no one's surprised that all of a sudden we've spent all this money for something that there could be could be contentious I think the simple answer is it's not tonight right. and um, but there's clearly been enough board input yeah. that we it will be on a future agenda yeah, that's, that's my concern. and it will certainly be for I would like to see it before September 30th <laughs> given George's comments earlier so yeah. probably okay. you know middle of beginning beginning yeah. no no later than the middle of September yeah. okay. especially if you're gonna want to add a informational hearing that you want staff at you should Okay, good. Yeah, Thank other, you. The other three resources, radio. Right. Yeah, WLVV. There's, there's yeah. actually a lot of it, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move forward unless there's more. And I'm going to pause because I you, haven't been. You're all set? Okay, so number three consideration of the private road, Morgan Lane. So we have an application for a private road. Let me just. Go through my notes here real quick. Um, we have an application from Matt Hall. I believe Matt is online. Matt, is there anything you would like to say? We have your, you're muted right now, but we have your application in front of us. This is for, to name the road Morgan Lane. It would be a private road. And if I'm correct, it's just south of Payne's Christmas Tree Farm off of Route 100. That's what it seemed like to me in the map. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> That's correct. Uh, there, and you would like the town to install the sign in the post? Uh, yep, that, that would be great. Check one thing off my list. Um, given that Matt's here, does anybody have any questions for him? Okay. Um, would uh, I would entertain a motion then at this point? I just was going to say quickly, I, I, I really appreciate um, the description of how you came <laughs> with the name. Yeah, yeah, I, I I like that too. Thank you. I know every time I drive yeah, by, I'll it, it. after my dog and after the Vermont State animal. So That's you know, right. Morgan Horse. Thank you. So I'll, I'll make the motion no to accept the uh, private road naming um, for um, Morgan Lane it is a going to be a private road. Um, with no intention of the town maintaining it in any way, and that the uh, town of Morristown will install the sign post, obtain the sign and, and, um, and install the post. Okay, I have a motion by Chris. Sorry. I have a second by Richard. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for coming tonight. Yep. Thank, thank you, everybody. Yep. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm pausing. You just reminded me I needed to do something. <laughs> I'll set <that> <laughs> Judy's been asking me for a couple of meetings to pause between agenda items. I'm finally catching on. Uh, consideration of the interlocal animal shelter agreement between Hyde Park and Morristown. So in our packets, we have a, uh, a proposed agreement between the town of Hyde Park and the town of Morristown. And um, hoping the board's all had a chance to read it. I certainly read through it, found it certainly interesting to read through. It had some interesting parts to it that were um, I thought I, I'll just say since I said that I thought it was interesting that I was reading through this and obviously animals was defined but animals was only defined as canines and wolf hybrids and in my mind I had a, a quick question about stray cats but 
I think we solved that problem pretty quickly. <laughs> Dogs are, are uh, unfortunately, unfortunately our, our concern and our, our issue. Um, but I guess I'd just open it up to the board for questions and comments. And I think we are looking to potentially take uh, action on this tonight. Yeah, I, you know, I read uh, through this over the weekend. I was really actually quite impressed with the detail um, that the agreement has, um, you know, right down to, you know, um, the quarterly payments to um, the other issues in terms of the fact that we are guaranteed three, um, allocated three kennels for dogs and that there's provisions to augment that if we need to, um, that that the dogs aren't released until fees are paid, if they can do that. Um, even if, if there's, um, uh, you know, uh, an issue with payment, um, how they handle that with the town of Morristown. So, I mean, I, I think that it's um, certainly um, an excellent contract. I also think that we're very fortunate to be able to find a shelter that can service um, our needs because it's a requirement. And if I'm correct, Brent, this is statutorily required of us? Yeah, it's uh, required under Section 3381 of Title 20 of the Vermont Statutes. So once again, this is another area where we were just catching up on what we should have been doing. Correct. Yeah. And um, if I could, I'd like to thank uh, Bruce, Police Department, uh, Chief Luna. Um, it's a real team effort to to you know, some of the details that you mentioned, Tina, about, you know, the quarterly payments. I, I'd also like to thank uh, uh, Brent Sheets at Hyde Park. You know, I came back to him several times with questions and requests, uh, changes to be made. And uh, this is just a good example of not only our town, but Judy as well. She helped me review this a couple of times and caught some things that I didn't catch. So it's not only a good example of, you know, different departments coming together to, to make this work, but also municipalities working together. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so we are looking for a motion to accept this agreement, is that correct? If you would, please. I would make a motion to accept the interlocal agreement regarding animal shelter services between the towns of Hyde Park and Morristown and authorize the town manager to sign a contract. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Do I have any discussion? I'm sorry, Chris, did you put a price in there? I did not. Would you please, I, I put a motion on the table in a memo format. Could you read that one more time? Sure. Because uh, our auditors need to Okay, so let me retract my motion. Sorry. Retract your second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I make a motion to approve the inter interlocal agreement regarding animal shelter services between the towns of Hyde Park and Morristown at a yearly base cost of $5,000 as presented and authorized Brent Raymond, our manager, to sign the agreement. So I had almost all the questions. So I have a motion by Chris, Sorry. and I have a second by George. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as presented say aye. 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 And that would be unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Old business. Uh, Sterling Mountain contract extension. So we have in our packet a uh, agreement with Sterling Mountain that uh, administration is looking to extend uh, through the end of the current fiscal year. I hope you've all had a chance to read it. Any, any thoughts or comments? I think we need to take action on this as well. We're looking for a motion on this as well. Yes, please. So I would entertain a motion right now just to get things going if anybody would like to. So I'll move to approve the extension of professional services agreement. Uh, amendment number one with Sterling Mountain Community Planning Design LLC at a rate not to exceed $10,000 in the end date of June 30th, 2025. So I have a motion by Chris. Second. 
and I have a second by Richard. I will say that um, Sterling Mountain Community Planning and Design LLC has been working with the town for the last um, many months and has helped us greatly discern the um, ambiguities between our town plan and some of the, the zoning bylaws. So this is the same organization. Um, so I just want to make that clear as to where this is coming from. The, the draft of the work they did that was dated August 1st, I thought was very comprehensive and very well done. That's the first document I've seen from them, but it, it, that is an indication of the quality of their work, and I assume it is. These people are good. Dave, Dave White's been a planner for a long time. It did, did happen to get to meet him back in the late 80s when he worked at LCPC. So I guess my comment would be as a little more of an explanation as to why we need to extend this was questions not answered. Why? Why? So um, we're certain to most likely see more mandates from the state have been very active on home act uh, they, you know they followed up this past year mm -hmm. um, and so there, there's changes that are going to be effective from from legislation that was you know the governor's veto was was overridden by the legislature there's that um, that the planning council is going back to work um, this is a, a resource should we need it to for Todd and the planning council if, if they choose to to, to confer uh, get a you know second third opinion um, and this is just an additional five thousand four thousand nine hundred something dollars has already been expended with the original so this is just an additional five thousand more through the fiscal year um, and it, we're not paying that out without billables so it's a resource for us to be able to utilize. Um, we we also discussed, you know, the town plan, although it's uh, it's being amended. There are other uh, amendments that that are likely needed. Um, so it's also a resource to help with that um, if, if that moves forward in the next months. So it will not be spent unless uh, a need is determined. Correct. Okay. So we're not. This is not paying out until. No, we're just. It's not like you know the the interlocal good. agreement for the yeah. for the uh, services with Hyde Park. It's as needed, and then we're billed basically per hour. We're trying to be a little proactive as as opposed to reactive in the past. So it's not a retainer. It's not a retainer. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. So we're only looking at two of the articles here because that's the only two that have seen me edits. But in full contract, this language that says based on your authorization of work to be done, I'm sure that's part of the, the full agreement. But then I'm just going to start on something. No, 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 no. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, this, this is not the contract. This is an amendment. It's an amendment to, to the original the contract. contract. We're not seeing the entire contract yet. It, that's, a, that's a good point. I should have provided that yeah. in the packet. It's not why I was. No, sure. but it's good to. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's just no the amendment to the original. Yeah, this was a kind of controversial because people didn't know about it. So the, the original contract would be great for us to see. And thank you, Laura, for your comments. I'm just going to reiterate what you said. Yes, it is being proactive rather yeah. than reactive. And we were caught yeah. months ago in having to be reactive, wondering yeah. Yeah. what was going on. And, and David White was able to <clears throat> clarify things for us greatly. It's also worth noting, I don't think that there's any plans right now to contract with him for any particular issue. So, you know, maybe something will come up, maybe something won't come up. Yeah, states full of surprises. Yeah, they tend to do that to us once in a while. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so. Yeah, just any other questions or comments from the board? Yeah, go ahead, Tom. Uh, I, I go to the planning council, Tom, go to the planning council. Uh, uh, all the time, and uh, it's it's one of the best uh, resources this town has. They work real hard. They they are really knowledgeable about what's going on in this town. Now, are they going to be the ones to decide whether they're going to need any extra help for that five thousand dollars, or is that going to be your decision that 
the planning council is going to need more assistance. Who's going to decide that's going to be? I don't think, I personally don't see this planning council needing any help except fixing the legislature. Let, let's be on there. Well, go ahead. Oh. If you read the, did you read the, the complete uh, report? I did. Okay. So it wasn't just state mandates that uh, we were peer reviewing. Um, it was clear that the information that some of the information in the bylaw changes did not, that the, that the planning council and the planner proposed to both boards, the trustees and the select board, didn't comply with the town plan. And, and this board and its due diligence and the manager um, wanted a second opinion on that. So it came from the select board. And thankfully we did that because had we rubber stamped those bylaw changes, yeah. it would have put us in a liability area where we had bylaws that were um, different to what the town plan was ma mandating. So it was money well spent to do that peer review. And I think that as new proposals come to us, if there's any questions, this simply gives us the option to utilize, whether it comes from the select board, the planning council, or, or from any, anyone within the administration, um, the opportunity to just make sure that we get it right, because it wasn't right, and we needed to make it right. Brent? So, uh, so who decided? Uh, uh, yeah. So to answer that question, uh, ultimately, I would decide, but I think uh, the, the zoning director, planning director, knows me well enough by now that he came to me with a concern or question and wanted to confer that he would just ask. Right. And I, I'm, I'm not some sort of uh, autocratic manager right so right. It, it'll be a very easy flow obviously i need to know what's being asked so i so i can have some sort of understanding of what's being billed before i receive a bill mm -hmm. so that's the only request i would have I, I, I look at this as us all working together to share a resource for the betterment and you know to make sure that the town is mm -hmm. is is fully um um compliant exactly. correct yeah. Yeah. So it's not something overseeing the planning council. No, not at all. Okay. All right. Because Todd, Todd under Vermont State statute is the yeah. only person who can oversee the planning council. The right. planning council under Vermont State statute, with his position provided to him by the select board some number of years ago, yeah. is only advisory to Todd. So mm -hmm. nobody can really, when it comes to to zoning, etc., dictate what he may recommend. For the right. select board of the trustees right. of course the select board and the trustees can vote uh, to approve or deny but the planning council can't dictate anything to todd right right i i can't dictate anything to todd as far as zoning bylaws um so that that's not at all what this is considered to be to be right. used for it's a resource for the community all right thank you thank you Brent. i just want to be clear chris stated that the select board asked for this peer review. I heard about it in the grocery store. So, uh, yeah. so somebody did it. We've discussed this. So, and, and that's history. So, I just want to say that I greatly appreciate you trying to get in front of it now, and, and it becoming very obvious and clear um, that we now understand yeah. the need and going forward how this will. Um, how this all works. So just to be clear, yeah, it was our interim town manager who went ahead with this. See, that's and not she select did, board. She, she, <laughs> no, you're right. It was the select board did not have a discussion with it. Okay, so she did have, she were, did have a, if I can just, yeah. she did have a discussion with me and she, you know, not that I speak for the select board at all, but you know, I, I do have conversations okay. with the town manager from time to time. And uh, but she was the one who, who went forward and, and did that. And that. frankly, I you know, I think we're all glad that that happened too, because it it did um, get us out of a potentially very murky situation. So I'll be clear. I'm now, not happy about how it happened. I would like to have known about it. Yeah. Um, 
and that's and and I want to be very careful people misrepresenting me and saying that I agreed to something I did not. Okay. So okay. it was not the slide board. Well, thank you, thank you. And and, and let's further to that. I, I think that as a public, as a resident, when we learn about it, it it's lacking transparency to me. We just you know where did that come from and it was a long time before we found out where it did come from there's nothing illegal about it there's nothing else it's it's, it's lacking in transparency of how that came about doing whether it was the right thing to do or not that's that's you know that's like, like okay. okay so we have a motion in front of us right now to consider the um consider the contract extension with sterling mountain does the board have any more comments? We're ready to vote. So all those in favor of the contract extension with Sterling Mountain Community Planning and Design LLC as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous, Judy. Okay, next on the agenda, approve the warrants. I would make a motion to approve the warrants. Okay, I have a motion by Chris to approve the warrants. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris, a second by George. Comments? I just Discussion? want to thank um, the Tina and Judy for making these available because I come in on Friday now because it was very important to me to walk through them. So thank nice. you. So now I can. Thank you for that. Be on the same board. Yes. <laughs> thank you for that. I think Tina deserves lots of. Yes. Uh, Lots of accolades. Yes. And so does Judy. I'm sorry, but. But uh, <laughs> all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. Community comments. Not seeing anybody. Okay, the schedule. We have a number of things on the schedule coming up. Uh, September 3rd, which is the day after Labor Day, we have our next select board meeting. And we also have, I'm sorry, yeah, we have a select board meeting and uh, we also have the town plan public hearing. So that would be the, the public hearing that I referred to earlier, which is two weeks hence. Uh, the 16th is, uh, would be our next select board meeting. And one of those would be a good time for us to uh, be talking about this in this information out to the public regarding the, the local election. September. I, I, I wanted to add something to to the yeah. schedule. It's it's a little bit farther out. Um, well, there's a select board meeting the September 16th mentioned, but at, uh, we're also going to be having the town plan approval vote by the select board on the 16th. Okay. That have been asked earlier. Okay. So the town plan may be approved on the 16th. That will be on the agenda for that night. On the 23rd, we'll have the uh, uh, charter hearing, public hearing for the charter. That will be the first of two, followed the following week on September 30th by the second public hearing for the charter. And then also on the 30th, there'll be a special select board meeting to sign the resolution and the warning that we've been discussing tonight. Other business, we have no- I just ask, um, um, I just wanna, because we normally always meet Monday, uh, I, I'm just have some concerns about making sure everybody realizes we're meeting on a Tuesday, not Monday. I mean- Because of Labor Day. Yeah, um, so just that, I just wanna put that concern out because- yep. You know, um, it's it's not the norm. Although it is consistent with what we've been doing in the past. Yeah. 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 We have not met on Labor Day in the past. Yeah. yeah. We have no other business, so I would entertain at this point a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion by Chris. I have a second by Richard. All those in favor of adjournment. Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. It is 637. Thank you, folks.